James, thanks for joining us on Live from the Hive. What a proud moment that must have been to come on in what was unfortunate circumstances, to, but to make your debut, to become the youngest goalkeeper in National League history, it must have been a bit of a whirlwind <laughs> moment. Yeah, you know, of course it's a sort of proud moment for me. Like you say, there's unfortunate circumstances, obviously a pretty devastating injury to Eamon, but I've talked to him since. You know, we wish him all a speedy recovery, but football is about opportunities and I was buzzing to come on, show sort of the fans what I'm made of and who I am. And I think I put in a solid performance. I did well on the day. And I'm happy with how I, did, how I did. For a goalkeeper to come on in any situation is always tough. But in a situation where your friend's gone off on a stretcher, we're playing against the second best team in the league, who were obviously going for promotion, that doesn't come much bigger than that. And I felt personally you handled the, the occasion brilliantly. You know, the first 10 minutes is always going to be a nervy one. You know, um, but... Once the first sort of ten, it's just another game. Agreed. I've not played a game against six foot four men, but yeah, you know, for my job and where I play, it's keep the ball out of the net. And at the end of the day, you just do your job. And fingers crossed, you get the win. And unfortunately, conceded a goal, but it's what it is. Did it come in sort of better circumstances that it was just before half time that you had the fifteen minutes to sort of settle yourself because you knew you were going to then come back out for the second half. Hundred percent. You know, um, you sort of get with the team and it wasn't the speed of the game wasn't necessarily a shock to me you know I've been training here now for a year um, and you get to know the boys and good mates with the boys and you just sort of after that 10 minutes of just chill relax take a breather it's just another game and it's just another training session where you just sort of with the boys and nothing changes how helpful were the boys in that break did anyone sort of give you a bit of words of wisdom yeah you know I think I'm in a very privileged position to have so many senior bodies around me. Um, Sarah was just like, you know, don't worry about it. You know, we've got you. you. We'll protect you. Don't worry. And that's always nice to have as a goalkeeper. You always need protection. So that was great. You said you've trained since the summer, of course, and very hotly tipped by the coaches you've had and the other boys. It was almost like they sort of treated you how they would have treated Scott, how would they treated Eamon. From that perspective, that must have been really nice for you, but they put the exact same trust in you as they would have Scott, who's obviously had a, a pretty illustrious career. Yeah, you know, um, it's big boots to fill. Mm. You know, Scott's, it's, it's no secret, he's a hell of a keeper. And Eamon's come in, he's done a great job. So it's big boots to fill, but you know, as a goalkeeper, you're always trained just for that one opportunity that you get whether that's off the bench, whether that's starting, whether that's the last minute and you can see the penalty, you know, you always, as a goalkeeper, have got to be ready and you've got to be willing to fight for the shirt and you've got to be willing to do whatever it takes for the team at the end of the day. Talk to me about your career so far. It's not many 16-year-olds <laughs> yeah. who have made a senior <laughs> debut, but just from sort of starting to where we're at now, talk us through that. Um, so, I was scouted by Barnett three years ago. Um, so I've gone through the academy system, played 18s last year. A lot of them probably would, have, a lot of the fans might see me in youth cup. Um, that's probably my most televised game, if you can call that televised. And then this year, to start of the season, came in to the first team after the unfortunate what happened to the academy mm. shut down. And um, ever since then, it's just been training with Lochi, training with Eamon. And then Parksy now, and it's just sort of getting that experience, learning off the senior pros, which is so important for my age. And, you know, just becoming a better player, a better player week on, week out, and just keep learning and learning. And I think that's the best thing for me right now. It must have been almost perfect for you when you've come into the first team and the first choice goalkeeper at the time is Scott, who's played for England, played at a high level, championship football, yeah. that off people to learn from it doesn't get much better at this level I used, I used the word earlier privileged you know I'm in a very 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 privileged position at 16 with what's happened with the academies even Sunday league you know no one my age has been playing football and to be even kicking the ball around or catching the ball in my case mm -hmm. um, it's a privilege and I'm absolutely buzzing to be here you know it's just, it's a great experience for me. It's a great way, hopefully, for a long career. I was going to say that. I was going to be my next question. <laughs> for longer term, what's the aim, I assume, is to cement a place as, as number one. I know it's early days, but that must be you know, the ambition. In football, you know, we're all competitors, no matter how old 
you know, I'm the type of kid, uh, Christmas Napoli game against your family is the World Cup final. <laughs> so um, I want, I want to cement that place. And obviously, you want the, you talk about end goals, and you talk about, oh, I want to be Premier League. You want to be, but you know, there's small goals in there as well. You know, it's fighting for you, fighting for the shirt, and it's about doing your time. And I'm absolutely buzzing to show the Bees fans what I'm made of, and give them that. Give them the James Cannon, give them the James Cannon feel. So um, I'm absolutely buzzing to show the fans what I've got. Hopefully in the near future. The messages you received on social media was countless. Your phone must have sort of <laughs> blown up in the 45 minutes that you were, that you had been playing against Sutton. Yeah, it must be nice to receive so many messages from, from the boys and, and of course from the Barnet fans. Yeah, it was. It was very sort of like I said, proud. It was a proud moment, but it'd be naive to, for me to say that that's the. That's the big thing now, you know, that's just a little step in, mm. at the end of the day. And we move on from that. You know, you've had your fun, you've had your laugh about it. And now it's the bigger picture. What is it next? What is it next? Because, you know, football is all about the next step. There's no, I, I don't see an end goal. It's just a little next step, next step, next step. And how to progress as a player. So, of course, that was great to receive the social media and everything from the boys. But... You know, new kids come in, you know, you've got to fight, fight for your place at the end of the day.